welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. In this episode, I'm going to talk all about using the casing mix on top of your sawdust blocks to improve results. You can see here, these king oysters are doing great off of it now. I've been picking um, right at two pounds on the first flush. Plus, I'm also getting about an extra half a pound on these second flushes. You can see they're coming out well. And then I even have third flushes start out on some of these. And I think this one back here might actually be a fourth flush, I'm just making one mushroom. So you can see they're lasting quite a bit longer without uh, mold problems creeping up. Although I can tell when I start seeing mold get on this, uh, underneath the casing layer where there's some dead mushrooms from uh, old tissue still there. When it starts getting moldy around there pretty bad, I start checking it or chuck it outside to the compost pile. But as long as there's that casing mix on top, it keeps the uh, mold spores from getting out into the surrounding air. So as long as it's producing mushrooms, I'm going to keep it down here and see how long I can keep it going. You see also, too, I have some new ones here. Very prolific. Now, I have suggested to put your blocks down in the basement as early as day 10 when they're fully colonized. But now I'm waiting about 14 days before I put the blocks in. Um, I was getting some meager results, kind of like you can see maybe, uh, oh, probably like something like this, where you have some of the casing material without pins on it. Um, also too, I uh, was kind of putting it down here when the casing wasn't fully colonized, but now since I've waited 14 days to case it, and then waited about a full week to put it down here where the casing is completely colonized by the mycelium. It's producing uh, much better results with uh, many more pins covering the top. So you can, you can see what I'm talking about here where you have a little bit of thinner colonization at the top. So make sure your casing mix is well colonized and that your blocks have plenty of time to sit around in the mycelium to digest and get a hold of the sawdust and mixture. Something else too that I should mention, but I've noticed that uh, my lion's manes here are working out as well as the piapinas that I had because I'm growing them on the same recipe as these king oysters, which is just too much nitrogen. The oyster mushrooms love the high nitrogen recipe, but you want to use the, the basic just cottonseed meal or brand recipe for uh, pretty much all the other mushroom species unless I uh, discover otherwise. But you know, I keep experimenting, finding the, the best combination, pushing the limit, that's what I want to do. So I'll give you updates as we go. Well, let's take a look at what is involved in putting this casing mix together, how I'm going to pasteurize it to uh, hold off contamination for at least four flushes, that's my goal. So this is what our casing mix is made of. We have sphagnum peat moss. We take out pretty much any place like tractor supply or Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. And notice too that it's dry, it's not the wet variety. But I'm gonna fill five gallon bucket, halfway full with it. And then the other half, I'm going to use vermiculite. Now, I actually bought these large bags at the hydroponic store because it's hard to find for about 30 bucks. So, go ahead and fill that up. Now, one full five gallon bucket 
will be enough to do about 24 bags plus some extra to uh, case all the blocks where you've already pulled a first flush off and remove much of the casing layer. Now I recommend do this part outside because the vermiculite and peat moss is very dusty and I'm sure it's not good to breathe in, although both are safe. So I'm going to pour that. You can see why I put the peat moss on the bottom. It's because it'll cover up that dusty vermiculite. So to this we're going to also add two tablespoons of our see here our hydrated horticultural lime, the same stuff we used for our lime pasteurization of the cottonseed hulls or whatnot. And just get two generous tablespoons and sprinkle it over the top, like so. And what that will do is add another level of protection besides just the heat pasteurization. And I really haven't had any mold problems with the casing mix itself, doing it uh, this way with the lime and the heat pasteurization. So we're going to mix this all up with some hot water and see what we get. We're going to start off adding one gallon of tolerably hot water to this dry mix, just so that when we mix it up, it's not flying dust everywhere. But it'll still stay dry enough to work with. If you just added the water all at once, it would get too soupy in areas and the vermiculite would probably soak up more water than the peat moss and it would get a little uneven. It would probably still end up uh, how you want it, but this is a better way of doing it. So fill up one gallon of tolerably hot water. And then evenly pour it in there. It will quickly soak it up. And then I just take my hand and work it around from the corners to the center. If you feel it's getting too dusty still, you can turn on your vent fan or even do this part outside. And what you're looking for is all that vermiculite to be evenly spaced around. Oop, getting a little messy. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed because you're still going to mix it up again when you add more water. I would not recommend using the cement mixer for this part just because it's going to be have little bits of sawdust and stuff that you're never going to be able to completely clean out. And you want to avoid any of your sawdust mix in this just because it'll cause problems. That's good for the moment. Then to that. I'm going to add another one gallon and then an additional three quarters of a gallon. So we're going to have a total of two and three quarter gallon worth of water in this uh, mix. Now of course if you're using less or maybe even a larger bucket, you're going to have to figure out how much water you're going to want. But you'll see what the end result looks like, and as long as it has that level of hydration, that's what you want. Now, like I said, this will be plenty of 
plenty enough of a mix for 24 bags plus extra to maybe do about another set of uh, bags that you've already taken a first flush from because as you'll see you remove quite a bit of the casing mix after the first flush. Now it may seem a little bit soupy and you may actually have a, a tiny bit of standing water at the bottom but that's alright because once we cook it it's all going to soak in evenly and every time I've cooked it where it seemed to be too wet at the start it actually ends up uh, drier than I wanted at the end and have, I have to add extra water as you'll see. Now since we've already mixed this quite a bit you can see the vermiculite is already well spaced out Notice too that I added that hydrated, hydrated lime at the start. If you added it now, it would not mix up well at all. All right, that's adequate. Now we are ready to load this mix into a large pot and bags to pasteurize it.